Byron Duffy at Radio City Music Hall in New York City, where we're celebrating the long-awaited third season premiere of HBO's Emmy Award-winning series, The Sopranos. Stick around, because the two-episode season premiere is just minutes away. I have 8,000 family members here and there, and it's all very nerve-wracking. It's very exciting. It's crazy. <laughs> How do people respond to you, like your fans, when they see you on the street? Well, I'm, I'm not Tony anymore. Yeah. Hey, Paulie, how are you? Where's the gun? Over here. Where's the girls? Over there. Well, this is a great group. Great family. Wonderful actors. Beautiful writing. <laughs> you know, it's so great. Hi, honey. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, hey baby. Hi, how you doing? Oh, how are you? Nice to see you. Tony Soprano being a mob guy, it's so interesting to see a mob guy go out, strangle somebody in the middle of the woods, and then pick his daughter up and decide what college she's going to go to. I'm a fool. Dirty work. Go, oh, yeah. Well, it's very interesting. The writing's just amazing. She's so fat, she goes camping. The bears have to hide their food. When Kitty holds ass, she's got to make two trips. <laughs> Are you a big Sopranos fan? Oh, yeah, especially since they started using my music. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, we were on the road, so I started to get into it. All together, it's an extraordinary epic that runs for 13 hours. Mm -hmm. Here we are, Radio City Music Hall. We have the mayor with us. It's pretty special stuff. Just about my favorite show on television. Yeah, it's really cool because it's four blocks from where we live. So last time we saw you, you right. whacked Richie Aprile. Right, well, it was a mistake. It was, I didn't mean to do that, but <laughs> I kind of miss him. <laughs> so what about the new season? Have you been sworn to secrecy? As always. <laughs> yeah. Well, but there's some good stuff coming up. Well, you'll see a lot. Yeah. Tonight you'll see a lot. So this is... This is a good one. There's a place around the corner from where I live in, where they're going to close off the whole bar and restaurant and have a Sopranos party. And they're going to lock the door at 9 o'clock. Nobody can keep it in. It means a lot to, to go there to see your, your show there. It's, it's beautiful. I used to come here uh, with my father and my mother. Yeah, I came here when I was like eight to see Lion King, and it was like the biggest thing I've ever seen. The last time I was here was for Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and that's the <laughs> Sopranos. Now, as that card burns, so may your soul burn in hell if you betray your friends and the family. It was really something we thought, uh, you know, we, we love it, we're going to enjoy doing it, and no one's ever going to see this. Once you enter this family, there's no getting out. If you've got a problem, you just got to let somebody know. This man right here. He's like your father. It is a family. These guys became friends forever. Yeah. You know, Jimmy and, and Stevie and Michael and Tony. Lisa Rico. Want to play some Nintendo? You and me? When are you going to throw that friggin' thing out the friggin' window? How is having Jimmy Gambolfini and Edie Falco as parents? It's amazing, you know? It's like the first day I came to this job, I had no clue what I was getting into. And it was just like, now, it's like so amazing. And coming to work every day isn't like coming to like big actors, you know, you're going to see big actors. It's just like, oh, I'm going to see Jim. Like, yeah. And it's like seeing, you know, your family. Oh, and there's a thing. He's like my second dad. He's watched me grow up, and he's there for me and looks out for me, whether boyfriend or anything and he's like my real parent where I'll walk on the set and he'll know if something's wrong. I don't even have to say anything. Stick around because we've got lots more from the premiere and the party right after this. Hi, I'm Karen Duffy in New York City at the Swingin' Sopranos party. In just a few minutes, the new season will begin. It played like a movie. And that's about a, the biggest theater there is in the country. I wish we could see every show that way, you know, and have that, that reaction, because you, you, you feel how people enjoy the show. Bacteria and virus migrate from the solar. You see this on TV? I gotta watch TV to figure out the world. Couldn't the screen been a little bigger? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't big enough. It's Our dog big. was in it, so we were Your very dog excited. was in it? Yeah, we were very excited. <laughs> Our dog's in the second episode. Really? Yeah. Just for a minute, he's sitting on the chair there. Well, you know, I'm big and I look really huge on the screen. The episodes were hysterical, they were interesting, they were, they were great. Hit it! <laughs> They did it again. I think this is going to be the best season uh, that we've had. I had goosebumps. It was, it was great. Are you happy? Am I happy? It was so great to see it with an audience. I found myself laughing and crying. Too. I was thrilled to sit on the big screen because then you hear hundreds and hundreds of people laughing at something you would just giggle at in your living room. 
sometimes you wonder, am I the only one that finds that so funny? You know you're not the only one when the, you know, 5,000 people erupt in laughter. You see such a small reaction, like when you see it in something like your living room, and it's like your mom and your grandma, like, you did good. <laughs> or when it's like 3,000 people, like, wow, you did good. It just makes yeah. you feel better. It's one thing when we're, we're, we're actually doing it, you know, and like going through the motions and everything, and but to see it in, with an audience, and like hear everybody laugh, and it was, it's just so amazing. I want my money! I want my money! It was wonderful. Actually, I was quite a bit surprised about, about episode number two. Yes. I loved it very much. In April, you're going to be on the HBO concert with right. The Boss. I am Mr. HBO. What is this? The handsome contest? Behave you. Hey. I really dig this show. It's uh, it's interesting. It's different. It, it's really real. It, it pulls no punches. I particularly like the scenes about the uh, bugging because I used to do that. Exactly. I can I can remember um, how we planned to break into houses and social clubs and basements, and it was quite realistically done. Then of course I also like to think that. They actually now set it in New Jersey because all the work we did to drive them out of New York. The writing, the acting, you know, uh, it's just, it makes you laugh. Uh, and, you know, next minute you're crying. It's just, you know, brilliant. Coming up tonight after the show, log on to HBO.com for a live chat with Soprano star Jamie Lynn Sigler. It's at 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. Stick around because we've got lots more of the Soprano stars and their friends right after this. Hey, welcome back. I'm Karen. Duffy, I'm here at the gala party where the stars are celebrating a new season of The Sopranos. You have such empathy and love for these characters that are kind of bad guys. We had a very good week this week, boss. Yeah, people are getting used to them. I think they're getting under their skin, so they, they, they just love watching them and spending time with them. How has your life changed? It's gotten a little bit heavy. You know what I mean? I can't take a bus, a train. But uh, I'm loving it. Every bad guy, I think, in film should have a, a good side to him. And uh, I think Furio Junta does have a good side to him. <laughs> I play a recurring character in the show called Hesh, so I don't know what the threat of the season is yet, so I'm more excited than anybody. We lost people who we were going to miss, like Nancy and Vinny Pastore, and, you know, it was really rough, but now this season we're getting people like loud I know. Joey Pants right I here. Know. And then we're getting, you know, we just get new people, and it's great. What did you say? Who's crew? You're the boss. You get to put in anybody you want over the crew. It's a great, uh, great bunch of people. The writing is the best I've ever seen. And David just called me up and said, you know, he's charming, he's funny, he's a bad guy. I'm a main guy! And I'll be around for a while, and, and I said, okay. You have a great character this season. Yeah, I do. I have a really fun character. It's like, on one hand, it's like being part of the Beatles or something like that. Who's the glasses? It's a big season for uh, Jackie April Jr. A lot of interesting things coming up. I can't say, you know, the code of silence, but uh, it, it should be good. So I'm the uh, New York underboss of The Sopranos. I'm a new actor. I'm seven or eight years old as an actor. And to be third season on this show is I've died and gone to heaven. But I don't want to get whacked yet. I've been charmed by a sociopath. I like Dr. Melfi. She's fun. I started out as an actor when I was 15. And David asked me to, to do this uh, last season. Uh, because he knew I used to be an actor. But I've been sitting in all my episodes because I'm, you know, a psychiatrist, so I don't get to stand up. But he promises that he's going to show that Dr. Kupferberg has legs. Did you have to approve the casting to make sure that, you know, he could, that uh, Stevie could play your husband? <laughs> I've allowed him to do it. <laughs> I take pity on him once in a while. We both had to take the test just to make sure the hair was high enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we both passed. I swear to God, we can have an entire conversation, but if that TV's on, he's not hearing a word I'm saying. One time this happened. <laughs> she's actually the most beautiful person inside and out, and I love her to death, and I'm so happy she's back with us. She's teaching, because I don't know what it would have been like. I was so spoiled last year having her there. We were, went to the Owen casting call in Harrison, New Jersey, and uh, they told me to put my picture and resume in the box, and three weeks later, I had a part on the show. Sounds Slim. Out of how many people were you selected out of? 20,000, I believe. And they follow us, you know, outside the house and to the school and interacting with other kids and see, seeing what that's like and their reaction to our family situation. So it's actually really cool. I play uh, 
I'm Meadows' roommate. I'm Caitlin Rucker from Oklahoma. Did I get hammered? How did you feel when you got the job? I was so nervous, but you know, after the first episode, I just, everyone, I just felt like I'd been part of the cast forever. I didn't know what I'm getting into because I didn't know at that point that the show will be so popular and the show, the people will like the show, and I didn't know that the show will be so great. Are you really Russian? I am Ukrainian, actually. I'm Ukrainian and I've been in Europe for five years, about five years. Anyway, I told John, I says, look, just don't downstairs. We're going to be seeing a little bit more of you these days. Yeah, it looks that way. Gigi's uh, on the move within the family, uh, if you will. Sopranos just kind of redefines the genre that we're familiar with. It brings freshness to it. You know, the writing and the performing, it's almost a revelation that you can take a theme like the mob and just make it new again. I've been watching it for, uh, for two years. I think it's a terrific show. I think it's very realistic. This is a sneak and peek warrant. Correct, Your Honor. And uh, very human and very beautiful, actually. Strength and honor. Scotch and soda. <laughs> as long as you're on the way to the bar. There's good television, but this is beyond good television. This is something very, very, very special. It's no coincidence that the reaction, people are reacting to it like this, because you don't, you don't get like, you don't get this in movies. Well, it's been almost a year since Pussy went to sleep with the fishes, Janice whacked Richie, and the feds caught up with Tony. Well, the wait is almost over. Coming up, the season premiere of The Sopranos. I'm Karen Duffy for HBO. What do you do when the world is watching? Give them everything you've got. And the best gets even better. With the greatest lineup of blockbuster movies anywhere. Are you not entertained? I've never been more alive in my life. series from the creator of American Beauty and a whole new take on men and women plus all new seasons of HBO's can't miss series oh, come on. It was fun. powerhouse shows there will be some spirited debate on this program. And critical sensations. An all new slate of HBO original movies from Emma Thompson and director Mike Nichols. I'm scared. From director Billy Crystal. There it goes! And unforgettable stories from the biggest and the best in the business. Aren't you willing to hear me out? Well, all I know is she better be worth it. Karen. Extraordinary music events never before televised. And live in concert. And from Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, the biggest miniseries epic of all time. So far, so good. And we save the best for next. Groundbreaking, critically acclaimed, smash hits. HBO Original Series. And now, the season premiere of the HBO Original Series, The Sopranos. Season on the Supreme.